One of the things that interests me is like, sometimes we gravitate to the things that we're good at. Do you feel like that was the case for you? Like you, you felt you, you found they were good at it? Or, or tell me more about the, how, how sort of gravitated towards, towards it. Towards training? Yes. I had no idea if I was good at it or not because I did not, tra I didn't actually coach or train anyone until my third year of university. And that's only because it was part of a course mm -hmm. where you had to, we got volunteers from the faculty and you would train them one on one. And that was the first time I ever got into actually coaching anyone. So it was kind of a shot in the dark, to be honest. And, and, Everyone that knew me was worried about it because they were like, this guy hates people, isn't sociable, and doesn't like talking to anyone. And that's kind of a big part of the job. Yeah, it's the part of it for sure. So, so how'd you find it? Like, yeah. How was that experience? Yeah, well, that was a very reassuring experience. I, was, I felt like I was pretty good at it, even though, of course, you're always nervous and you think you're going to screw everything up first time which used to do always screw some stuff up but yeah that first experience of training the uh, teachers and stuff like it went well and I liked it so that was like thank god because otherwise it would have felt like I had wasted what two and a half years of the time and I needed to switch majors <laughs> but honestly it wasn't anything I planned it wasn't necessarily intentional but thank god it worked out because it was kind of a happenstance. Yeah, and, and I, uh, I want to go into that a little bit further, but I actually want to take you back for a couple of things. Like, uh, one thing, I, you were saying that when you started getting into lifting, you're, you're 120 pounds, is that, is that correct? Yeah, 120, 130. I don't remember exactly. Did you find that, like, was it a struggle to be strong, or do you feel like did you had some natural tendency to be strong? I definitely had a natural um, affinity for the deadlift because I mean I was within like a few, I think I started at 315 for deadlifts like the first couple times I ever deadlifted like and before I was even you know I think on my way up to 240 over the next two years I was hitting like a you know mid fours and stuff like that but still around like 200 and not that big and then by the time like I said, I was 18 and I'd gotten up to like 240. I was, I deadlifted 500 pounds. So I always had a natural affinity for that lift in particular. Um, squat and bench, I had to work, I still do have to work very, very hard for. But uh, yeah, definitely didn't start off that strong, especially when you're that small. Mm -hmm. Now, along the way, were people asking you for advice? Were you ever sort of like a mentor to other people along the experience, or that only really happened once you started coaching? That only happened once I started coaching because I was the guy that would go in the gym and, like, have his headphones on and not talk to anyone while, mm -hmm. he, while I was in there. And no one bothered to ask, eh? No. I mean, hell, I was a, I was a baby. I was so young back then. I, even if people asked, I don't think I would have known how to help them. Probably, well, then again, I might have just directed them to all the stuff that I was reading at the time. Because, like I said, I did before I went to university. Everything I learned was basically from online articles. Like, like yeah. I said, Elite FBS and T Nation were the two biggest ones I remember. And I would just like spend a bunch of free time on the internet reading them, trying to absorb whatever I could. But no, I didn't help anybody until I started coaching. Yeah, I find, I find a lot of people, that's the way they get their information. Like, they're not even reading or anything. They're sort of just asking the guy at the gym that they think is the right, you know, what's the right thing to do. Yeah, that's not a safe bet, especially nowadays with social media. It was very different back then. But nowadays with social media, like, everyone thinks they're an expert and everyone thinks their opinion matters. And <laughs> there's no threshold anymore. Like, there's like, yeah, there's like no barrier to entry at all. No, none. You see at least, you know, someone had to be like, oh, okay, you're decent enough to write an article 
or our blog or whatever it was back then and we'll post it you know that would that was at least some kind of barrier nowadays it's like well if no one will post your stuff you just start your own thing and start telling everybody i'm kind of glad looking back i'm glad that i and i still feel like that that you never know enough you definitely never know everything and you're always learning and i'm still i think i grew up like that thinking um you know what makes me so special that everyone should listen to me only well, the, in the last syndrome <laughs> yeah only in the last couple of years and it was mostly because like we worked at lifetime together and they i did some education seminars there over stuff that i was like comfortable talking about uh, only then and then with some of your guys' feedback being like oh you got you're good at that and you explain things very well was i like oh i could probably like start you know coaching even trainers on some stuff but i mean that was literally after seven eight years of training people one-on-one -on -one, and at that point what 13 years of training myself yeah, it's just, it might, it might not be something that we ever get over this whole, like, why people listen to us, even though so many people come and ask us this stuff, and we know that we're able to explain it. It's a, it's, I think we compare ourselves to people we know know more than we do. Yeah.